fans and welcome to the January edition of Forza Monthly. Can you believe it is 2021 already? I know I certainly can't. Hello! Hello! <laughs> welcome to Forza Horizon 5. One of the things that everyone on social media was talking about yesterday is about how phenomenal Forza Horizon 5 looks, with some of them even saying it's the greatest looking game of all time. Right from the start, we knew that we wanted to make the biggest Horizon ever. And you don't get that far down that path before you realise there's no point making the biggest step ever unless it's also the most diverse because otherwise you're just adding more of the same. Mexico is a country which is almost like the whole world in one country. Mm -hmm. It's just got snowy mountains, epic canyons, beautiful historic cities, stunning coastlines, jungles, rolling hills, uh, farmland multiple different types of desert. And then you add on top of that the fact that it has this culture that's known and loved all around the world. The art, the music, the people. Um, there just couldn't be a more exciting option for the Horizon Festival than Mexico. I mean, the accessibility options were one of the focuses I personally wanted to have when I was testing the game. Mm -hmm. um, especially since, you know, we've got such a wide range of people who play the game, it's really important to make sure that anyone and everyone who wants to play the game can play the game and, and also enjoy themselves. Sure. That's right, the 2020 Toyota Supra GR is coming to Forza Horizon 5 on day one. Chris, should you go check out in game? Yeah, let's go. Let's go. Forza Horizon 4 lands on Steam tomorrow at 10 a.m. PST. And as we mentioned earlier, as a thank you to our millions of loyal players, and to welcome new players from Steam, all Forza Horizon 4 players across Xbox devices and Steam can add the 2019 Porsche 911 GT3 RS to your collections for free. Earlier today, the Hot Wheels Legends car pack was announced, which includes six brand new cars. We have another massively requested car, one that I, th I think probably more than any other has been uh, hounding us in all of our Twitter mentions for uh, the last <laughs> number of months, and that is the 2020 Corvette. Corvette C8. It's finally here. It's finally here. Super 7 High Stakes launches this week. Uh, we're super excited for it. Shall we, shall we take a look? Chris Asaki on the show today. Hello. How are you doing? Hey, thanks, Leah. And howdy, everyone. Our development approach this time around is unlike uh, anything we've done before. We started uh, this work by asking you to sign up um, for our Forza panel, uh, just to ensure that you, your friends, and the communities you are building and are a part of uh, will really enjoy and thrive in this world of Forza Motorsport. And we've completely overhauled our physics and track dynamics. So the changes we made from Forza Motorsport 7 till now is more than the changes that we've made from Motorsport 4 through 7. Another thing um, we kept on hearing our players say um, is that they, you know, they want to get faster, but there aren't any systems in the game to help them. We implemented a new system to, to help you unlock your fastest self. Think about sector times and where were you really faster or slower? Um, you know, how can you focus your practice session to, to actually get better? Uh, we've got the Porsche Showdown arriving on Forza Street on June the 7th, because the Summer Muscle Showdown comes to Forza Street in two weeks. First of all, we're excited to announce the upcoming 2021 Motorsports Gaming Series powered by IMSA. We've had an awesome week with uh, the Brickyard Bounty Hunter event uh, running where Joseph Newgarden has been out there racing on, uh, on the event, putting down a lap time, putting down a time of 39.229. If you can beat him on the leaderboard, you get some very special prizes in game. Um, over the series of uh, three different Rivals events through September, there'll be different pro drivers out on track in Rivals who you can compete against. And that, as they say, is that. 2021 is a wrap for Forza Monthly, so we hope you enjoyed the show today. Uh, thank you to all of our guests for making the time to come online, and thank you to all of you, near and far, for watching and playing. We'll see you next year. Goodbye. Hello, Forza fans. Welcome to Forza Monthly. I hope you're all enjoying 2022 so far and stick into those New Year's resolutions, which was hopefully just to play more Forza. Uh, the Lunar New Year is in full swing in Forza Horizon 5, but not for much longer as Series 4 arrives this week. We've got details on that and more for you today, so let's take a look at the schedule. So, up first is our usual double dose of Forza Horizon. We'll take a quick look at the Forza Horizon 4 Series 45 Festival Playlist with Playground Games, and then we'll jump into Forza Horizon 5 for a preview of what's coming in Series 4. 
After that, I'll catch up with Hoki Hoshi in our community spotlight. It's a Forza streamer and YouTuber who's well known around the community for his amazing tuning guides. And then Ali Tech runs down the latest in community events. And that's not all. If you stick around for Forza Horizon 5, let's go right after Forza Monthly. You'll get a full breakdown of Series 4. Without further ado, let's welcome Playground Games senior producer Tom Butcher back to the show. Hello, Tom. It is good to see you. Welcome back. Hey, Leah. Yes, yeah, good to be back. How are you? I am doing splendidly, thank you. How much Forza did you end up playing over the holidays, <laughs> dare I ask? <laughs> uh, I, I played a lot, some for recreational, some for work, but yeah, I had a good, a good time regardless. <laughs> Just basically spending the holidays in Mexico. That must be quite pleasant, actually. <laughs> yeah, <pretty> much. <laughs> much nicer than whatever the weather was like here. <laughs> exactly. Um, so you're going to run us through the Forza Horizon 4 Series 45 update. So um, let's just uh, yeah, let's just go. Tell us what let's you have it. for us. <laughs> okay, so Series 45. Here we go. Uh, so 50% series rewards. You've got the Horizon Backstage Pass. At 80%, you've got BMW 850C SI. And for summer, 50%, you've got yourself a Jeep Gladiator. And at 80%, the Peugeot 207S. Summer Trial, the most iconic trio. A reward for that, get yourself the Ferrari F40C. And then rounding out summer, we've got... I'm not going to try and sing this. Is this the way to <laughs> Castelletto? Get yourself the Ferrari F40. <laughs> uh, Battle of the Brands. Get yourself the Nova 69 Forza Edition. And Marathon Runners, the super cool modern race suit could be yours if you complete that seasonal championship. Let's take a look at Autumn. Uh, so 50% of the 68 Firebird. And at 80%, the Bugatti Diva. It's a super popular car, that one. Then the Autumn Trial, the Holy Trinity. The reward for that is the Rimac Concept 2. That's a hard to find car and it's super fast and it's super cool. Then rounding out Autumn, Old Habits Die Hard, get yourself the Vauxhall Corsa 09. Supercar Showdown, can get yourself the Ferrari F50 GT and Special Performance Seasonal Championship. Your reward for that is the Ford Falcon Forza Edition. Then in winter, 50%, another Horizon Backstage Pass, and at 80%, you can get yourself a Koenigsegg CCX. The winter trial, the triumvirate, uh, for the report, all about me, rare emote. Seasonal championship, getting cold street. Uh, that's... <laughs> So I just got that, I was reading it. Um, <laughs> get yourself the Aldi TT RS. Uh, the Seasonal Championship Power Struggle can get yourself the BMW E92 M3 GTS. And then finally, Seasonal Championship Magic Number. It's three, of course. And uh, you can get yourself the VW Notchback. Mm -hmm. Then finally, in spring, at 50%, you can get yourself another Horizon Backstage Pass. And at 80%, you get yourself the snazzy patrol outfit. Spring Trial, the Triple Threat. A lot of threes in this, uh, mm. this <laughs> festival playlist, I noticed. Uh, that, that, uh, winning the trial will get you a Porsche 906. And then the Spring Seasonal Championships, Mustang versus Mustang. You can get yourself a Mustang, the Ford Mustang S5. The Touring Masters Seasonal Championship will see you get the BMW M5, that's the uh, 88 Forza Edition, and then the Muscle versus Import Chevelle 67. Excellent. And that's the playlist. There's some yes. great stuff in there. It's going to be a lot of fun. Absolutely. And I'm really sad you didn't try and sing Is This the Way to Castelletto? But there's always that time. <laughs> um... <laughs> yeah, maybe another time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Still plenty of fun to be had in Forza Horizon 4 uh, if you want to dive back in to historic Britain. Uh, but we've got Mike Brown standing by to join us for our Forza Horizon 5 update next. And we'll talk with him and Tom after these favourite community photos from Series 3.
stunning variety of photos there as always and now it's time for our forza horizon 5 update so welcome back mike brown it's been a while <laughs> Hey, Leah. Uh, great to be here. It has been a, a long time, hasn't it? Yeah, but no, great to be back on Forza Monthly. Even just that one month we didn't have Forza Monthly, that felt like a lifetime for some reason. It was like, it just stretched. <laughs> um, Absolutely. So, the heart grow fun there. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and I missed being here. Um, we've seen a few ways in which the ever-evolving world of Forza Horizon 5 changes each series, from the holiday market to the Lunar New Year. Um, so what theme can players look forward to when Series 4 settles next week? Yes, so it is the uh, Horizon World Cup. Uh, this is born out of the fact that I think all uh, car enthusiasts have uh, an affinity for a particular country's cars, be that you're a JDM enthusiast, you love German performance, Italian style, British luxury. Uh, it's not necessarily the country that you're from. In fact, like I love American cars. I love American muscle. I, I drive a Mustang. Um, and I think that Oftentimes, it's really interesting how people build this affinity for a country's cars, even when it's not their home country. And that is what the Horizon World Cup is all about. It's all about showing support for the country's cars that you really love. So if you're a huge JDM enthusiast, then you're going to spend this entire series playing in JDM cars as much as you can. I'll be sticking to American Muscle cars. And you at home can pick whichever cars you like based on whichever country you have the strongest uh, affinity for. Um, playing races in those cars earns that country points and then whichever country wins will uh, be a prize that will generate a prize that the whole community will get to enjoy that's really cool i love that it's very creative um there you go horizon world cup then uh, debuting this week um but what other exciting additions have we got coming in series four so so we have some very cool cars are we jumping into that now uh, I think so, unless you have anything else you want to mention. Is that, is that, no, I think it's cars. Let's look. Um, so let's kick us off with, uh, with this one, uh, which is the, uh, the Wooling Sunshine. Um, this car is an absolute icon in China. It is the most uh, common car on Chinese roads. It is the best-selling Chinese car of all time. It comes in many, many different flavors. You can get two seat, four seat. I think they do an eight seat version. You can get um, lots of different engine configurations. This one is the Wuling Sunshine S, which comes with a, a particularly sporty uh, 1.2 liter engine. Um, that makes about 86 uh, peak horsepower. Um, not to 60 in about 15 seconds. Not to 100. Uh, no, it doesn't actually get to 100. Um, <laughs> But before we have um, a look at this car in action, let's just take a quick look at the VT uh, of these cars uh, that are oh. all going to be coming out in Series 4. Uh, just a sneak peek. Right. <laughs> Hold your horses. Okay, now we've seen them all in action. Let's jump straight into the gameplay and uh, see what it's like to actually drive them around and uh, make a few little uh, changes as well. I think we've got yeah, got in mind. Right. Yeah. Now we've seen them in action. Let's see them in action. Yeah, let's we'll see them um, in action again. So... <laughs> oh no! How's how's the, the wheeling sunshine going to handle a um, a sandstorm? A sandstorm. Ooh. I do not know. Um, so, <laughs> that looks like the safest see, place um... to be in a sandstorm. <laughs> <laughs> Very rugged. So the the out-of-the-box performance of the Wuling Sunshine is about what you'd expect for a, a city-going MPV that costs about $5,000. Um, it, it'll get you up to 60. It might even just about touch 80 <laughs> if you're really lucky. But I don't think that's how most um, Horizon players, how many Forza fans are going to want to enjoy this car. So um, let's take a look at what upgrades you can do on it because it does have mm. quite a few fun upgrade options. I mean, so how can say, you improve on perfection? 
<laughs> well, let's have a look because I'm. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so it starts out with that 1.2 litre engine. Um, around, uh, let me do it flat, let me, let, let's confirm the actual horsepower -age. Um 84 brake horsepower. Um, but we have some more options here. We can go 6.2 litre V8, you can chuck, chuck in the turbo rally if that's your thing. Uh, I, I think I'm going to go with the uh, 7.2 litre V8. Uh, as you can see there, that will add uh, 766 uh, horsepowers. Um, I'll stick a, stick a turbo on there as well for another 220. That gets us, just creeps us over 1,000 horsepower. Um, and if I don't put any other tyres on it, I will not be able to use that horsepower. So let's stick on some racing tyres <laughs> as well. Um, away we go. And I think as we saw in the VT there, the, uh, the, there's, a, there's a huge amount of uh, upgrade potential uh, in the Wuling. Uh, I forgot one thing. I forgot one thing, guys. Mm -hmm. uh, it also I didn't want to mention a, it, but... <laughs> There we go. As well. So when you're when you're heading in, in, into Beijing to uh, use your your van to go and take out your plumbing supplies or whatever, you can do it in style with this mm. kit. And speed, let's, uh, style let's and speed. Go. So you won't be hitting a hundred in this, no matter what you do. <laughs> but we, you can look good <laughs> doing it. <laughs> I think we'll get well over a hundred now. Um, yeah. I, okay, I know okay. we've added. Um, now that we've added about 950 horsepower, I think we should do. Um, Let's hope so. Let's see. <laughs> see it lurching out of the, uh, the auto show. Uh, yeah, I didn't actually do this bit in the, in, in the rehearsal, so let's just see if it's actually drivable. Um, <laughs> needs a bit Sorry, of work on the old gear ratios there. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> um, oh yeah, look at that. Easy, easy. Yeah, so you probably, probably want to spend a little bit more time tuning this one. I think a, a, a racing gearbox and a little bit of tweaking of the ratios and you'll have yourself a, an absolute beast of a sleeper in the uh, Wooling Sunshine. I can't wait to see what players do with this. I feel I, I feel like it's going to be a real, uh, real the popular there. car for a while. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Doesn't handle the rocks so well, but that, that's okay. <laughs> yeah, it's um, one piece. It's one piece. This is a, this is a rugged, reliably built... Um, workhorse of, of China. Yeah. There you go. It's, uh, if you happen to run into rocks, then this is the car you want to be in while steering it. Um, <laughs> all right. Uh, what have we got next then? So this is car number one. And we've got three more. Yes. Should we take a look at the, uh, the SVX power? Yeah. Okie dokie. Let's. All right. There it is. I love the variety of colors we got here as well in the uh, delivery. Very nice. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, so this is the MG SV X Power. Not not a Chinese car by, by any stretch, but um, yeah, part of MG. Uh, so it's originally revealed as a concept car in uh, well back in 2001. Um, actually got quite a lot of comments at the time around it looking pretty uh, sleepy and a bit, um, I don't know, tepid. Uh, so when the production model arrived the following year, it had pretty aggressive styling pass done on it. So the front grille was brought down, give a much more meaner look at the front, more angular lights, bonnet vents, and those fins on the side as well, uh, which gave it kind of, well, I don't know, makes, makes it feel more like a muscle car to me. And this mm -hmm. all came from a guy called Peter Stevens. He was a chief designer on the McLaren F1. Um, and yeah, it completely transformed the car and just gave it like a real... Uh, real mean look um famous celebrity owners you know it's my favorite uh fact about cars <laughs> i love this include, my favorite uh, part of falls monthly anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but so famous celebrity owners of this car include rowan atkinson or mr bean oh. um ultimately sadly this car's a bit a bit of a footnote for um for mg rover and um it's kind of came out towards the end of uh at least yeah before they were acquired but um, only nine of these were forever sold, but I think when one of the nine wow. is Mr. Bean, you know, it, that, that counts for quite a lot, right? Yeah. It's like a thousand that. sales. Exactly. One it's, Mr. Interesting Bean. Say, it's interesting to say, Tom, it's got the muscle car stylings because it borrowed the engine from the uh, the Mustang, didn't it? Yeah, it's... Uh, it, so if you... It, we don't have the, the concept car to look at, but if, if you look at the concept car, that which... which um, yeah, just had a much less angular kind of front frontage. Uh, it's it's pretty remarkable transformation, um, but yeah, obviously 
as far as markets go, probably wasn't the right choice at the time for MG, unfortunately. No. But it's here. It's in. It's in Mexico, and um, yeah, it's super cool car, part of Car Pass um, for Series Four. Cool. All right. Um, so on to car number DP9. three. Yes. All right. So this is the uh, the Neo EP9, um, standing for Electric Performance 9. Um, it is an absolutely rapid, all-electric um, supercar from from China, from Neo. Um, makes about 1,340-ish uh, brake horsepower, uh, 0 to 60 in about two and a half seconds. Um, absolute furiously fast. Um, you may have seen Richard Hammond driving it incredibly fast in the Grand Tour. Um, <laughs> and you now can relive that as well in Forza Horizon 5. Um, all the notable interesting stats about it is it has like, a ridiculous amount of downforce, about 2,500 kilos of downforce in fact. Uh, which considering the car only weighs about 1,700 kilos, uh, means it could theoretically uh, drive upside down uh, if it could go fast enough. <laughs> What an insane bit for me. <laughs> it, it looks it looks really difficult to get into. I'm I'm imagining having to squeeze yep. in through the through the side. <laughs> Getting through the top. <laughs> um, let's go see what it what it looks like with the doors open. It comes with this. It has to be not having open doors, isn't it? They have to build the car around you. Um, so... <laughs> yes, oh, you stay in there for like... <laughs> Wow, look at that. Oh, it's not so bad. There's a big like threshold a to get across. That is, that is big, isn't it? You, <laughs> you don't be wearing a skirt oh, no. to climb over that. Mm -hmm. I'm just wondering about paying for my Big Mac. Um, <laughs> <at the drive -thru. laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah, or just even just a parking ticket somewhere, just like trying to reach the button through that. <laughs> <Yeah. nightmare. laughs> It's a it's a good looking car though. Yeah, very Tron like. I, I just I get something about the rear lights and the the wheels and everything, the low profile. Very Tron. It's very, very cool futuristic. Very cool doors. It actually. is yeah, very cool. Uh, yeah. yeah, it doesn't look like a dragonfly. It's really cool. Um, yeah. Should All right. Um, and car? then yes, let's look at the last car. Yeah. Put the words right out. Uh, of the MG3. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, now this one you so, could easily yeah, go this... through a drive-through and get a parking <laughs> garage I, ticket. I don't doubt this car has been through a lot of drive-throughs. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this is uh, the MG MG3. Uh, it's one of the first um, cars that got, uh, I guess, a makeover when when MG was bought. Um, so development was done in the UK with production initially in China. Um, You've got two engine options in the 1.3 and 1.5 litre option. Um, you're not going to be smashing speed cameras in this stock uh, with 0 to 60 in about 10 seconds. But um, I, I think if you've got a bit of a soft spot for uh, kind of, I'm going to say normal cars, quote unquote, um, then this is definitely in that bucket, which I think makes it really cool. Mm. Um, and yeah, it was originally based on an old uh, Rover design that's obviously when they, when they did a make over it, um, yeah, kind of doesn't really represent that original car anymore but yeah I, I think it's a pretty cool car and it's uh, definitely a hot hatch and um, I think players are gonna have a lot of fun with this one as well definitely. Yeah, I speed traps in it well I show you <laughs> <laughs> with a good with a good wind and a bit of um, hill then... <laughs> so it's, um, this is so the I'll... best selling oh. Chinese car outside of China isn't it this is uh, wow. I, I believe, um, with most of those in the UK, with I assume people who are fans of fans of the badge, um, wanted to to rep for MG once again. Mm. Mm. Nice little sturdy everyman car. <laughs> Can't go wrong. <laughs> um, so uh, alongside these one, cars one as well. Car the car. Uh, oh, we sorry, do, but I was going to mention just before we go into that, um, as we are on the theme of, of like the Chinese cars right now, you also have another bit of. Um, uh, addition to the game uh, involving that as well. Yeah, so yeah that's right. That. Yeah, so obviously a uh, bit of a theme with, with, the, with the Chinese cars here and 
in the Series 4 update, we're going to be adding um, Simplified Chinese as a voiceover option. First time we've had that in the game, uh, well, in any Forza game, so that's super exciting. And yeah, we're really, really looking forward to having you know a whole bunch of new players being able to enjoy the game um, in a way they haven't been able to before. So that's, that's super cool. And we've obviously got uh, with the Wu Ling and um, the, the Neo EP9 and the MG here as well. Uh, yeah, some great, great Chinese designs as well. Yeah, awesome. Um, very fitting with the theme. Um, and we also have, finally, <laughs> as you were mentioning, another car you wanted to show off today, which uh, has the OPI, exclusive OPI vehicle coating, uh, and it's the Ford GT. So do tell us more about that. What is, um, this, is this is a partnership here with Xbox, isn't it? Yeah, so Xbox and OPI Nail Polish have done a collaboration for a new uh, gaming-inspired collection that, that launched globally this month, wherever OPI is sold. And probably seen it in the news, got loads of cool, fun, um, fun well, colour names. Mm -hmm. uh, Forts is part of that collection. So we've got the colours here, uh, Racing for Pinks and Trading Paint. Um, and yeah, Mike, I don't know if you want to talk a bit about the car. Um, yeah, so the car, as you say, is it's got this awesome livery wrapping those colors uh, from the OPI. It's also been pre-tuned as well, so it's got a uh, uh, Playground Games special tune on it, pushing it up to the top of S1. Um, and if you want to get the uh, get a little code so you can get your hands on this car, then I think you just have to uh, purchase the range of from OPI and you'll get the code so you can download it. Yeah, there you go. And you know, nail polish, everybody loves that nail polish, come on. You can match the car you're driving. You can match it to your controller so you blend in. I just <laughs> can't really go wrong. <laughs> 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 I think it's a really nice partnership as well. It's not often you see um, like beauty brands getting involved in uh, gaming, so I uh, I love that personally. I think that's awesome. Um, it's and cool. especially yeah, when it's, it's very cool. It's very cool. Yeah, when they can collaborate with uh, livery like this and make such uh, like that's such a nice, gorgeous sunset combination there. Love that. Um, but yeah, there you go. They partnership with OPI. Yeah, I think it's, um, not, yeah, I think it's really nice that. Oh, sorry. <laughs> No, no, carry on. <laughs> it's really nice that we've been able to, because uh, it is actually like a, a, a really cool unlock, right? It's a car that would mm -hmm. otherwise be tricky to get in a paint that looks super cool with an upgrade preset that makes it super fun to drive. Uh, yeah. I think it's a, a really nice bit of content in the game that you get as well. Yeah. Very nice partnership. I love it. Um, well, thank you for showing us that. Uh, that's the updates coming to Series 4. Uh, lots of new content coming. And the team has also been hard at work making some eagerly awaited improvements as well to the game. Uh, so what sort of fixes can we expect to arrive in Series 4? Yeah, cool. So we, I, I've, there's obviously a bunch of fixes that are going to be going out in Series 4. I'm going to pull out some highlights. Um, so buckle up. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to read through a bit of a list here. Uh, but yeah, we've got lots of crash and stability fixes. Um, and yeah, you should also see some fixes for server stability and bandwidth optimization, which hopefully will improve the reliability of uh, all our online game modes. Keeping that online theme, um, the online player list, which was preventing friends from appearing on there. You'd also sometimes see the wrong car and, and player level. Uh, that should be fixed. Uh, there was also a bug where finding a session notification would persist on screen. So we've also um, fixed that and improved the, the notification logic for online matchmaking, to be clearer. Uh, if you lose connection to Horizon Life, you, you'll no longer lose your skill chain. I know that was a source of frustration uh, for a lot mm -hmm. of players. Um, on wheels and, and wheel hardware, we fixed some of the issues around uh, rumble, on, rumble missing on wheel input devices on PC, as well as it addressed an issue where handbrake peripherals weren't working consistently. Uh, for exploits, we've addressed some AFK farming and wheel spin exploits, uh, as well as rebalanced some car masteries for certain cars. So if you've unlocked perks for those cars, you'll notice when you get the update, you'll be refunded skill points for those change masteries uh, so you can choose to spend them on the same car or spend them elsewhere but you'll you'll keep all the rewards you earned from them originally so yeah quite an important note on that uh, on pc we've made some improvements to the distant texture and foliage quality when running on ultra quality setting and we've also fixed a bug which was causing longer load times on pc uh, when the frame rate was unlocked uh, we've added new engine audio for the Bugani Zonda Syncre uh, we've got a bunch of accolade fixes, which weren't completing for some players, uh, such as the Stay Frosty, Shopping Spree and Twilight uh, Sage accolades, uh, and some of the rival accolades as well. 
on the festival playlist we fixed an issue where players progress on a seasonal championship wasn't being shown as complete uh, if they change the difficulty on the pre-race menu again which i know is very frustrating for a lot of players um selecting the open challenges from the playlist will now let you match make straight into uh, into that which is uh, a nice quality of life improvement um and worth mentioning at this point i know players are waiting for the retroactive fix for some of the bug challenges in earlier series uh, whilst that's not in this series 4 update pleased to say it's in the final testing stage and hopefully be released in an upcoming uh, content update um, finally, we've changed the default scaling option for um, shapes and decals to non-uniform in the livery editor, which is uh, in line with how it functions in previous games. Um, so, yeah, kind of a, sounds like quite a small thing, but I think if you've if you've kind of got that muscle memory for livery editing and you spend a lot of time in the livery editor, as, as we know a whole bunch of our players do, um, yeah, hopefully that will be a nice workflow improvement. Again, that, that's not an exhaustive list, just some highlights uh, I've picked out. So please keep an eye on our social channels for the full release notes um, yeah, coming out soon. So, yeah. Excellent. And breathe. <laughs> and breathe. And see, and he's finished. Laundry list of fixes there. Um, yeah, thank you very much for going through that. And yeah, as, uh, as Tom mentioned, please do go check out the socials uh, if you want to see the full list of bug fixes and things coming to Series 4. Uh, but thank you both very much for the updates and uh, hopefully I will see you on the next World's Monthly. Thanks very much. Bye. Great to be here. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Leah. Bye-bye. Cheers. Um, this Forza Horizon 5 update was just the tip of the iceberg for what's coming in Series 4. And Playground Games will unpack it all for you in the Let's Go stream coming up at the top of the hour, right after we conclude Forza Monthly. And we love spotlighting your Forza creations. Do tag your on the Forza social channels, uh, Forza Monthly and even in-game. Just like the photographers behind these lovely images of the Series 2 holiday market, Hoki Hoshi is standing by for our community spotlight up next. Hello, Hoki Hoshi. Welcome to the show. Welcome. Hello, hello. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. A pleasure, because you are a household name for many Forza fans. But for those of you who might not know the name, give us the spiel. Like, who are you? What are your channels about? Uh, how did we get here? <laughs> <laughs> sure. So it's a, it's a big question. Um, it is. <laughs> ultimately, for me, Hoki Hoshi is about like helping players understand the game more and kind of through that have more fun with the game. Uh, you know, I do a lot of deep dive content into all sorts of different topics, whether it be, you know, mm -hmm. building and tuning cars just as a whole, just in general, or doing deeper dives into more specific elements of tuning or even specific cars or you know, driving with a wheel, which is uh, the video I just put out. Um, so it really comes from a place of helping players that may be more on the casual side of things or newer to the series might not even be like huge car fans. You know, I don't assume that players know <laughs> anything like what, what understeer might be or what toe angle is. I start at the beginning, uh, but I want to give the players the tools to step it up and kind of become a more, a more serious like horizon fan or Forza yeah. fan in general. Yeah, no, that's awesome. I think a lot of those things can feel very intimidating at first when you join, especially because Forza Horizon is so accessible for people who just want like a more arcadey feel to a game and you can run around smashing into things. And it's nice that if you feel like so inclined, you can get more in depth into it. Um, but tuning exactly. guides are probably what you're most well known for, right? So uh, why did you start making those guides? Sure. So my, my first guide was in Horizon 3. It was a drifting guide. And uh I was kind of a regular on the subreddit 
And uh, I noticed a lot of new faces coming in for Horizon 3, I think in part maybe because of the PC launch. You saw so many new people entering the franchise. Uh, so I figured instead of like writing up a text post on the subreddit, um, I, I had some video editing skills. I would just whip together a, a quick video and and throw it on the uh, throw it on the subreddit, not really expecting it to go anywhere. You know, I, I wasn't a YouTuber at all at the time, <laughs> uh, but I woke up the next morning and it had like thousands of views and hundreds of comments. And I like woke up my wife and I was like, honey, I, I think I'm going viral. <laughs> um, and I just kind of took it from there. You know, it's video creation has always been something I've done kind of as a side fun hobby. And now I can kind of merge that with Horizon and it's it's mm -hmm. been fun. So, I mean, with that in mind, there are a lot of different philosophies when it comes to tuning a car. Um, so what is your approach? What's the hokey approach? Sure. So uh, it's a great question. That's actually something that kind of comes up a lot uh, on my mm. streams and in my channel, because I definitely take um, a more realistic approach when it comes to tuning. You know, for me, it's about making sure players know the rules before they learn how to break the rules. Uh, and also just making sure I'm not, you know, telling players, hey, you know, s set your slider here because it's good. I want to make sure they understand, you know, what that slider means, what that's doing to the car and kind of the background mechanics um, of the tuning and building system, which are all based in realism. Yeah. Yeah. OK, so starting from that realism, I like that as well, learning the rules before you can break them, because that's there's a lot going on when you're tuning a car. So I think that's quite important to know how it all interacts together. Right. Um, so do you make guides for all race types and skill levels or do you sort of cater to a specific uh, group of people like a focus? Yeah, I, I definitely bounce around uh, quite a lot, whether it be, you know, I, right now I'm kind of working through the major guides with, you know, tuning as a whole diving into you know rally or drifting uh but then mm. kind of as the game progresses um i kind of take my viewership with me up a skill level and up a skill level and i start diving more into you know like a whole video just about the mechanics of differentials in horizon <laughs> and stuff like that so i i definitely kind of start at like the 101 you know college level and then and then yeah. it steps up from there and i cover everything i mean it's it's totally flavor of the month you know if i'm doing like hill climb stuff in Horizon, I'll probably end up making a guide about that. So <laughs> that's fair. I mean, look, you gotta go with whatever you're passionate about at that moment, right? If you're doing something, that's what make content about it. That's what I always say anyway. Um, turn all your hobbies into content, or else. <laughs> um, yes. So yes, exactly. <laughs> car reviews are another staple of your YouTube channel, and uh, you actually have a unique spin on them as well. Um, what sets your reviews apart from like a, a traditional, uh, we're reviewing this car in Forza Horizon or even real life? Yeah, so for me, uh, the, the term I use is, is role play. That's not quite the right word, but I feel like it kind of gives you an idea. Um, so what I do is we start with kind of a, a walk around of the car. You know, you can, you can like do the explode button in the mm -hmm. Forza Vista. Uh, yeah, there you go. It's up on screen now. We walk around the car. And, and show off some of its uh, uh, quirks and features. And uh, then we take it on a casual drive through the open world. And I'll chat about you know, some, of its, some of its strengths, some of its weaknesses. And then we take it back to the garage, build a tune for it, and uh, take it around a test track, which has its own you know, time leaderboard for it, which is fun in and of itself. Uh, but then the, the, the final piece of the video is giving the car a hokey score which is mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's a 13, 13 point system, which kind of covers everything you could ever want in a car. And I score it there and then it goes on a, a hokey score leaderboard okay. as well. Okay, all right. Um, so I'm kind of curious, you know, you said role play. I like, is there like a character involved in that? Do you have the, do you become the reviewer? <laughs> <laughs> to a point, yeah, to a point. I, I would call it almost like, self-aware role play you know mm -hmm. it's i know i'm in a game you know still but we you know when i take the car on a first test drive i i follow like the traffic rules and and yeah. try to stay in my lane and stuff like that you know drive like you would actually test drive a car in real life yeah that's fair no i like that that's good i guess you can you assume you know we're assuming it's it's life 
<laughs> like, how does it feel? Yeah. How does the yes. seats feel? <laughs> There's a smell in here. Exactly. Yeah, a new car smell. <laughs> um, so how do you choose what cars to review? Is it like a community thing or is it kind of just whatever you fancy at the time? Yeah, so it, it starts with the community. Uh, at the end of every video, I just ask, ask the viewers to suggest a car for the next video. And then I will take that list, compile it. And for me, it then just becomes driving something new, like driving something I wouldn't normally drive. You know, in, mm. in real life, I'd say I'm like more of a, a JDM guy or like Euro hypercar kind of guy. But for the car review series, I'll go, okay, well, maybe I'll drive some American muscle or, or newer sports cars kind of thing. Uh, it's about kind of making sure I don't get stuck in a rut and kind of breaking out and, and trying new things. And part of the car review series is encouraging the people who watch it to do that too. You know, like, hey, this, this car is worth checking out. There's like 500 cars in this game, but you know, try something new. Yeah, that's fair. I like that, especially if the community is suggesting cars as well. Because I mean, having, you know, being a part of a community or leading a community, I know how much they like to troll me. So I can only imagine how much they'd love to throw something <laughs> that you would never drive and yes. go, here you go, have fun. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't um, believe how many requests I've gotten for the PLP 50. Oh, by it's the way. my favorite car. <laughs> Yes, you have to do it. <laughs> um, so have you done any reviews for Forza Horizon 5 cars yet? Or are we still, we've got quite the backlog on 4, I imagine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we have not kicked off the review series for Horizon 5 yet. I'm still kind of working through uh, the bigger content guides, which are definitely bigger uh, video projects for me. But mm -hmm. uh, happily, I can say that I'm currently in, uh, in talks and, and working on locking down the uh, test track, the official Hokie okay. test track for Horizon 5. And once that once that gets locked in, we will we will be kicking off the series for Horizon 5. All right. OK, so they got that to look forward to. Um, all right. Well, so let's go back to Forza Horizon 4 then. Which car has the highest Hokie score in Forza Horizon 4 so far? Uh, so that was the BMW M5. I think it's 03 M5. Uh, and it's okay. because it's it's obviously such it that car exudes style. It's such a cool car. Uh, it makes for a good road car, makes for a pretty good rally car, makes for a pretty good drift car. And that kind of jack of all trades um, characteristics is is what makes for a good hokey score. So yeah, that one okay. I think it just beat out the Porsche 944. I like that because you're reviewing so many different varieties of cars here. It must be quite hard to compare them all. Uh, but we have the leaderboard right yeah. there, so you can actually see. Um, look at that. <laughs> oh, and it's gone. But you can see on the leaderboard there. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's interesting how it stacks up to some of the other cars that other people might review mm -hmm. highly. But that's the benefit of being able to review on your own, because you get to make the rules and yes. you get to say whether or not you like <laughs> it. And that's that's the thing. Um, so, speaking of cars, you have recently hit 100,000 subscribers on YouTube. And you're doing something a little bit special for the milestone, something that's really unique and really cool. So please tell everybody what that is, because it's it's awesome. <laughs> yeah, this is this has been a very fun project to work on. So sort of what I did was create my own limited edition Forza edition car. It's called the Hokie Edition Mark III Supra. And uh, what I did was match the in-game Mark III Supra car specs to my real car, like to the decimal point. I actually went out with a camber gauge and with tow plates and measured my real car. Uh, I looked up the suspension dynamics. You know, the, the dyno is accurate. We've got the engine sound as close as it can be. Um, everything tries to match my real car as much as possible, uh, except for the livery. I don't have that cool gold livery on my real car yet. <laughs> um, yet? Okay. But the, the in-game car, yeah, yet. Uh, the in-game car has a Forza Edition themed Delivery. Uh, and then there's a hundred of those cars made. There will only ever be a hundred of those cars made. And each one is numbered uh, one through a hundred. And I'm giving them out uh, largely through the gift drop system. So I'll, I'll kind of use this space as a bit of a, a PSA. Guys, uh, if you are playing and you get a gift from Hokey Hoshi, uh, make sure you open it because it, it is going to be one of the 100 Hokey Edition Mark III Supras. Very special edition. Um, and that's awesome. That's such a fun, unique way to do that. So um, props to you for that. Um, and congrats on the milestone. And congrats to all the lucky winners uh, of the Hokie Edition Supras too. Um, so we've been talking about your YouTube channel a lot, but recently you've just started playing Forza on Twitch as well. So how's that been going? 
you enjoying it having fun <laughs> yeah oh twitch is, twitch has been a blast you know i've been i've been doing youtube for about five years now kind of on and off uh twitch is definitely a newer venture for me mm -hmm. uh but with, with like pre-recorded video content i feel like you're always keeping your audience a, a bit at arm's length mm -hmm. um Whereas with Twitch, you're just letting them in. Like it, it's almost like you're sitting on, you know, a, a big couch with like a hundred of your closest friends, you know, playing a video game, and uh, that's been a really, really fun way to interact with the community. And for me, I am typically more of like a solo gamer on my own time. Mm -hmm. So it's been a great opportunity just for me personally to like break out of that shell, jump online with my whole community, and just have a ton of fun. Yeah. That's what Twitch is all about. That makes, that's what makes it so fun. Um, so before we went live, you mentioned that you see your streams as a friendly onboarding to online. So I kind of uh, I want to dig into what that means to you. Sure. So this definitely stems from some of my own feelings uh, when, when going online in video games, not even just Forza in general. Uh, for me, like going online, especially if the first time can be stressful, you're either you know, worried about letting down your team or worried about not doing well personally or maybe trying something new that might be bad and you might be stuck with for the game and uh yeah. so especially with my stream the goal is you know anybody can jump in anyone can join no skill level requirement you know you don't have to be following me. you don't even have to like me i don't care you jump in <laughs> you race with us <laughs> uh and you just have a good time it's it's good fun clean racing and we encourage people to try new things you know don't yeah. don't maybe take like your your best a class race car like build something new build something weird and, and just have fun online racing yeah that's what it's all about at the end of the day isn't it just having a bit of fun we have to take it serious we can yes, just yes. have a good time um well thank you so much it has been great talking to you today hokey hoshi and uh thank you so much for joining us on the community spotlight yeah thank you so much for having me it was fun Absolutely. And for more Hokey Hoshi content, please give him a follow on YouTube, Twitch, Instagram, and Twitter. Uh, we are always on the hunt for more fantastic Forza content creators like Hokey Hoshi. If you know somebody who deserves a feature, nominate them for a chance to appear in a future community spotlight at aka.ms forward slash Forza Spotlight. We are rounding the final corner. We've been full of these racing funds today, haven't we? Uh, we're rounding the final corner, which means Ali Tack is up next with his rundown of community events. But first, a message from a guy who knows a thing or two about taking corners. It's our old friend, Joseph Newgarden. What's up, everybody? Joseph Newgarden here. I'm so pumped for 2022. I can't wait to get going again in the IndyCar world. Our season's coming up super fast. Um, but this year, we got more Bounty Hunter challenges that we're going to be doing on Forza Motorsport. Really pumped on that. Our first challenge is gonna come up January 27th. It's gonna be at Watkins Glen with a 2019 ZR1 Corvette pace car. Uh, super wicked car to drive. Um, I've, I've driven one a couple times on a track. Really, really difficult, lots of power. Um, can be a little bit snappy, so watch the balance of the car, especially at Watkins Glen with all the high speed corners. Um, but everybody that participates is gonna get a special custom livery. And the winners of the event, if you go quicker than my time that I post, you're gonna get an even more custom livery, which are both gonna be super cool. Um, so enjoy the event, try and beat my time. Um, I'm a little bit rusty, but I'm, I'm definitely gonna be getting back into the swing of things on Forza. So I wish you guys good luck. Um, look out for this challenge and then look out for the ones after that. Take care. Hello, Ali. Welcome back to Forza Monthly. It's good to see you. Uh, we're gonna dive straight into Joseph's things. Joseph's back as well. Joseph's okay, back let's as well. Yeah, we're, we're go. <laughs> We've got another Team JN <laughs> Bounty Hunter in Forza Motorsport 7 as well, which is going on right now. So uh, please do give us all the details. Tell us everything. <laughs> yeah, so it's the Corvette ZR1 pace car. I think you're calling this segment like it's like Spring Watch, but like New Garden Watch. So like, just, <laughs> I don't know, New Garden, something like that. It's right. So it's the there it is. The pace car, Corvette pace car, ZR1, a front engine Corvette. So for anyone who uh, feels a little bit uh, humped still by the idea that there's a mid engine Corvette uh, racing around at the moment, back to the front engine one and uh, you can race it at Watkins Glen short. Right now, Joseph Newgarden himself is on a 114.183. That's a 611th out of over 13,000 people who've tried so mm. far. So if you reckon you can beat him, Get on out there. I reckon it's going to take a few laps. I still think with 611th, anyone can do it. It's not like a the skill barrier isn't too high yet, um, but it, yeah. it will take a few laps. You have to you have to work your way there. 
Okay, all right. And then you two have a little bit of a rivalry as well. So how are you faring so far? How are you? Are you me, feeling emotionally about this? <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't think he has a rivalry with me. Um, no, no, but, he is. You're the, yeah, he wakes I, up every morning thinking, I cannot wait to take on Ali Tak today. <laughs> oh, that Ali Tak. Yeah, he wakes up Damn in the that night. Um, <laughs> uh, I can't wait to go out. I haven't said a time yet. I will. I will, I'm sure. Uh, and I usually struggle with the new garden challenges. This will be the third one, I think, that I've raced against him in. And... Um, a win is not at all guaranteed. It's very, it's very mm -hmm. tricky, and he improves throughout as well. That's the thing about oh, about the Velociraptor okay. is it's a learning <laughs> dinosaur. Yeah, and so that's, uh, that's very much how Joseph is. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Okay. Well, uh, I'm sure we'll get an update on that next month. Uh, but we must move onward because Tora kicked off their endurance racing season with the Classic 24, uh, sorry, Classic Daytona 24, a couple weekends ago, and uh, we that's have right. some highlights from that as well. So let's take a look. periods where we don't see overlap you're always seeing cars in traffic whether it be their own class and look at the ambition oh. from hydra there oh come on no i changed oh and look at this stingray getting into solo king wow Huge. i thought he was going to lose a lot more time there stingray you animal uh, up the inside and past on critical he has a little look and they're bumping into each other these two uh, you love to see it and that's the spin fully uh around Ooh. the critical in the wall uh, you don't love to see that no i play it very safe through traffic it's still side by side as Critical gets on the power out of the international horseshoe. It's going to be too wide through the king. Can they pull it off? Gotta give up. Yeah, he's got to give up. down force. Easily done. And Commando back on up through the field and into second place. Holding tight as this stint pushes towards its ending. That looks so exciting, actually. <laughs> Maybe partially because of your commentary. It was very, um, that sounded oh. like, quite intense. Um, but I mean, were you stuck in the commentary box all weekend or did you, did you, did you have a little uh, bit of time on the track? Well, this time I was in the commentary box all weekend. Oh, uh, so okay. I, fortunately, I didn't have to sweat too much, but I will say <laughs> there was a turn 10 themed team, uh, called mm -hmm. Nacho Average Squad, where they sort of, a few of the guys from turn 10 did team up with uh, some community members. So shout out to Commando, Race Boy, Eternatum. Uh, and uh, Zed, Terapt, and Platinum as well, who were in that team. I will someday get a t-shirt of uh, Race Boy's face while he was sliding into the grass at the bus stop <laughs> in that clip, uh, just because it was it was so um, so classic. Uh, just, um, uh, I love you, Evan. I'm sorry. <laughs> that. Uh, uh, it was a great race. Uh, 24 hours of racing around Daytona. The second time Toro have run the classic rule set, which is when we go back to Group C cars, uh, and also some of the sort of IMSA GT cars of the late 80s and the early 90s. Um, it was won this time by ESV, uh, Phantom, Barcode, Eclipse, and Scottson with a winning team at the top. Uh, shout out to Phantom especially, who kind of, uh, maybe there's a little bit of an arc coming to completion there with him uh, spinning out in the 2019 race, but here in 2022 taking the win. And uh, also in Group T, ESV Motorsport took the win as well. So a double win for ESV, uh, Moshi's, Bobbitt's, Yem, and Craviator on that second team. Here are the overall results of the yeah, event, and uh, you can see everyone and all the teams it was a it, i mean i can't emphasize enough that it's a long race 24 hours <laughs> split right. into 12 stints of two hours it, it is a grueling thing and uh, yeah. uh kudos to anyone who tried it yeah natural average squad doing well there too up in second place nice um right well you have another clip to show us and this is from something new in forza horizon 5 and very exciting too which is the horizon racing academy so uh what is it how does it work tell us everything <laughs> Yeah, I'm really excited to introduce this one. Uh, this is uh, a new Discord community just launched this last week and it's already got however many hundreds of members. It's doing really, really well. Uh, it's to help new players learn the core skills of racing uh, on Forza Horizon 5. So a little bit like what Hockey Hoshi was talking about earlier on. There's, mm -hmm. a, there's a theme, a meta to this, to this uh, episode. Um, mm -hmm. It offers a tough challenge for experienced players as well, I should say. I, I've tried almost every challenge on it now and they're really hard. So the way it works <laughs> is if you're a member of the Discord community, 
uh, there's a series of trials that you can take on. And if you compete, complete that series of trials fast enough, you can see me kind of doing a few of them here in the background. If you complete them fast enough, then they'll give you a license in the Discord. And the harder the challenges that you can complete as you go up through the, the levels, the more advanced a license you'll get uh, racing. It's really, really dope. Um, I've got through two sets of licenses so far. There's three available at the moment, and the third one is very challenging. Um, mm. And they, they look at all sorts of different elements of the game. It's very, very cool. So I, I strongly recommend anyone to get out there and, and give it a try. I think there might be a link in chat, hopefully. Um, so yeah, give it, give it a go. All right. Amazing. I'm going to have to rush us along, I'm afraid. But there you go. Um, you can all take on those. And we're going to look at the community calendar right now. And you're going to... I need speed. Speed, Ali. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. All right. Uh, um, <laughs> you guys can, can see a whole bunch of them. The highlights for me, just two highlights, are the Gen 3 Supercars from FTC Racing and also the OMA World Touring Car Championship coming back. I saw my old teammate, Mr. Fergs, repping his livery out there on Twitter just today. It's going to be awesome. OMA always do a great job amazing uh there you go check out the calendar you can go back to the vod and pause there if you want to see what's happening because <laughs> there's a lot as always thank you very much ali for joining us and uh we will see you next month goodbye bye and we are approaching the end of the show, but we've got a few announcements before we say goodbye. First up, the Lunar New Year may be coming to an end in Forza Horizon 5, but you can still continue to celebrate with this custom livery on the 1961 Jaguar E-Type, available now in your in-game messages. And tomorrow is the first day of February, which marks the beginning of Black History Month in the United States. The Forza team is excited to join Xbox in honoring black culture and black communities by celebrating this moment with you, the players. We're looking for the best community created delivery designs that celebrate Black History Month. All you have to do is create your design and share it on social media with the hashtag ForzaBHM. And then we'll show off our favorites in Forza Horizon 5, Forza Horizon 4, and Forza Motorsport 7. And the featured designers will receive in-game credit rewards. Call for entries begins today and closes on February the 13th. And for more info, please check out our studio Twitter account at Turn10Studios. And there is more to watch on the Forza channel as well. We've got right up after this in a few minutes, Playground Games will be live with all of the juicy details of that Series 4, uh, series four update for Forza Horizon 5 that we mentioned earlier. And then you've got uh, Forza Horizon 5 Smack Attack with Shannon McIntosh later on on her own show. And that is a wrap for January. I will breathe now. <laughs> but we'll see you all in February for our next Forza Monthly. Follow the Forza social channels for dates and all the latest Forza news. Thank you so much for joining us. It's been a pleasure and we'll see you next month. Goodbye.